To the moment people believe in Christ, they are told, now you have entered into a battlefield. You must put on the whole armor of God and be ready to fight. That is wrong because you cannot uh, put on the whole armor of something that you are not even aware. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this program and also depending on where you're watching from, uh, this is uh, Beholding Christ Show, and uh, my name is Ben Fetcher. I'm blessed and I am reigning in life through one man, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, that they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they reign in life by one, that is Jesus Christ. And that is my portion, that is my confidence, that because I have received of the abundance of grace, I've received from the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. I am reigning. The only way to reign in life, to reign over sickness, to reign over circumstances, to reign over everything, whatever it is from darkness, the only way to reign is through grace, by the gift of righteousness, through one man, the man Jesus Christ. Because he came into this world that we may reign together with him. Hallelujah. So I welcome you to be with me for this wonderful show that is the Beholding Christ. And uh, it's only happening here on Wema TV. And I love you so, so much. So I want us to pray so that we can get into a conversation tonight in the name of Jesus. We are so delighted, dear Father, that uh, we have found a place in you you. In you, we are not strangers, we are not foreigners, we are not far from you, but in you, we are sons, royal priests, we are blessed, we are called to reign in Christ. And therefore, we are so delighted that today, as we settle down to hear from you, we thank you that your spirit will minister to our hearts and revelation knowledge will flow freely through me, uh, through my vocal cords, and to everyone that is watching this show tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And because of your glory, because of the revelation of your word, our lives will never, never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Somebody say amen, 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 and amen. Today, I want to start a very interesting series, a very interesting uh, uh, topic. And uh, this is one of the topics that is highly uh, spoken about, especially in our days in the church today. This is a very interesting topic because uh, almost every church knows about it. Almost every believer, even those believers who just got born again yesterday, they have been made to know that you are in a battlefield. Salvation is getting into a battlefield. So everyone, when they got born again, they were, they were, uh, they were brought into the battlefield and now they think that they are fighting. But even before they were established in the knowledge of the truth, they were ushered into the battlefield. And now every believer believes that he is in the battlefield and he is fighting. Some are fighting the devil. Others are fighting the prince of Persia, as if we are in Persia. Others are uh, pulling down rulers of darkness, strongholds, witchcraft, and all those things. They are pulling them down and they are fighting battles after battles and after battles. Actually, in the average Christian life, all that he does is to fight. Either you're fight, fighting the devil, fighting demons, and actually even in most of our churches, even it is very uh, saddening that in most of the churches when you go for a Sunday service or even a midweek service, you find that most of the time is spent fighting the devil. You devil, you did this, you did that, you have done this, and now we take you, we bind you, we lose you, you know. <laughs> People are doing all manner of gymnastics and they are using all their strength, all their power, all their understanding trying to fight the devil. So you realize that in a whole church service, maybe it's a Sunday service, in a whole two hours, 
all that the people have done, all that believers are focused on is the devil, the devil against my mother, the devil against my father, the devil against my business, the devil against my family, the devil against my everything. So, and that is the plan of the devil so that he can be given all the attention instead of focusing on the real matters we focused on the devil but as i begin this episode i want to tell you that the devil is not and should not and has never been the focus of believers the focus of every believer should never be the devil the focus of the believer is one jesus christ the bible says that it is in him we live, in him we move, and it is in him we have our being. So, uh, so I will be talking about spiritual warfare. <laughs> spiritual warfare, praise God. It is interesting that I'm talking about spiritual warfare while I'm seated down. And uh, mostly when people are talking about spiritual warfare, they want to stand up and walk all around and fight. They change their voice and fight the devil. But uh, relax, just relax <laughs> and uh, put on your, your belt as we embark on this journey of understanding what is the meaning of spiritual warfare and who are we supposed to fight we are, if we are fighting anyway. Because actually Paul says we fight a good fight of faith and who is our enemy if there is an enemy anyway. Yes, we'll know all this. But today we are going to lay the foundation and we'll continue with this uh, episode. And I believe we'll have a wonderful time. So turn with me in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. <laughs> this is where it all begins. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. So kindly allow me to use the New King James Version. And... Uh, we thank God that the spirit of revelation is flowing freely and you have been given an understanding. And by the end of this episode, your life will never be the same again. Your focus will never be the devil, but your focus will be Christ and Christ alone. For he is the author and the finisher of faith. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse number 10 says, finally... <laughs> Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Wonderful. It is interesting that in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, where Paul takes time to talk about warfare and to talk about the weapons of our warfare, it starts with a finally. Praise God. And you know, every word in the Bible, every word is very important. When I was in school, we were taught that you cannot start a subject <laughs> with finally. <laughs> finally means the final thoughts. Maybe, let me read for you the verse 10 of the Passion Translation. It says, Now my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. So, I have saved these most important truths for last. So, this is the final thought of Apostle Paul. The New Living Translation says, A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That is verse 10. A final word. Final thoughts. Let's see the message. The message says, And that, and that about wraps it up. It's wrapping it up. Praise be to God. <clears throat> Which other translation? We can see the Tree of Life translation. In the Tree of Life translation, he says, finally. Praise God. <clears throat> Why is it important to take this word and understand? This just one word, finally. My final thoughts. My last words. My final uh, message. As I wrap it up. Why is it and what is the importance of saying this? This is because before you understand what he's going to, uh, to say here, he assumes, that is the writer, he assumes that you have an understanding of what he has been speaking about. If you miss the, the previous content, you cannot understand 
the summary. You cannot understand the final thought. So Paul assumes that every believer, before you arrive at this point of finally, or his final thoughts, or his wrapping up message, he assumes that you have understood what is in his first uh, writings. Praise God. <clears throat> and you cannot, you cannot get into a class and start with finally. You must start from the introduction. Praise be to God. Like now, when we were in school, when we were in the, the lower classes, uh, we were taught the A, B, C, Ds. You know, the alphabets and numbers, how to, uh, to pronounce or to, to say the, al the alphabets and how to count numbers. Anyone who missed the A, B, C, Ds, will have a very hard time in understanding everything else. Like I usually say, uh, because I loved biology when I was in high school, in biology, there is the introduction that was laid, a foundation that was laid in class when we first entered into the class, the first, the first lessons of biology. And we were told that biology is the study of living organisms of, or living things. And the entirety of biology is found, or the, the entirety of biology is about understanding the characteristics of the living things. And I remember there is uh, an acronym we used so that we can understand the characteristics of the living things. We used to say Mr. Niger which is to mean uh, Mr. Niger, M for movement, R for reproduction, N for nutrition, I for, uh, uh, yeah, we, we used to, to use that, irritability. Then there is, a, I think, G for growth. There is a E for excretion. There was R for respiration. I can't remember correctly, but I, I believe it's in that direction. Everything about bi biology lies in that acronym, Mr. Niger. If you missed that part, it doesn't matter what else was taught in that class, you will never understand it. <laughs> Praise be to God. It's like also in chemistry, we had the things we used to call elements. And I, everyone who missed, I realized that everyone who missed the elements, the, the, the lessons about elements, you know, sodium, chloride, and how, the, 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 uh, how to, to the symbols that were used and the letters that were used to, you know. Anyone who missed those lessons, he had a tough time, he or she had a tough time in understanding the entirety of chemistry. Praise be to God. It is in the same way, if you miss the ABCs of Christianity, you will not understand what Paul is calling his final thought. Praise God. So that is to say, for us to understand this, this thing that is talking about spiritual warfare, we must first be established in the realities of what Paul has been teaching throughout his letter of Ephesians. Because this is a letter that was written to the church at Ephesus. And it is not only important to the Ephesians, but it is important to every believer. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 is not where believers should start. So it is very unfortunate to realize that there are so many believers, the moment they get born again, the moment they get into Christianity, the moment people believe in Christ, they are told, now you have entered into a battlefield. You must put on the whole armor of God and be ready to fight. That is wrong because you cannot uh, put on the whole armor of something that you are not even aware Praise God. It is, another good example is uh, when people are joining the, the, the defense, defense forces or the armed forces. There is something we call recruitment. And we see they announce for a day of recruitment and we see people being recruited into the army. The moment they get it recruited into the army, it will be very unfair. It will be very wrong that very specific day after they are 
they join the army after they re, after they are recruited into the army then they are instructed to go into the battlefield or to go into the war zones that will be very unfair and they will be beaten like no man's business why because there is a training that needs to be done it is very unfortunate that people take christianity so casual and they think like everyone now can go into the battlefield but you must understand there is a training and this training is what now Paul is establishing in Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, all the way to verse 9. And at this point, I want to divide the book of Ephesians into three. The book of Ephesians is divided into three. The first part begins from Ephesians chapter 1, from verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 to Ephesians chapter 3. Then the second part is Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 4 to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. Then the last part is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to the last verse of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 24. So without that understanding you will not how you not be able to get into the battlefield and you will not know what you are fighting. So in Ephesians chapter 1 all the way to chapter number 3 Paul is talking about our reality in Christ our identity in Christ praise be to God he's talking about who we are in Christ Jesus praise God and i would i want to draw your attention to Ephesians chapter number 1 from verse number 1 so Ephesians chapter number 1 to chapter number 3 uh, Paul is talking about our position in Christ a position in Christ i call it the sitting position in Christ where we are seated we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places because the coming of Christ you know people think like Christ came that like the death of Christ was just like any other story in the bible just in the same way david killed goriath how samson killed the lion how david killed the the animals in the wilderness all those stories how moses climbed the mountain how you know all those many stories so many people think like the story of jesus is one of the stories the story of jesus is not one of the stories it is the main story he is the main character of the scriptures he is the main character of the entire bible praise be to god so the coming of christ He came that he may destroy the works of the devil. He came that he may save and seek and save those that were lost. He came that he may give life. And when he came and he set us free, now we must understand what was the essence of his coming. And when we understand the essence of his coming, we are able to walk like it. And after walking like it, even when we are attacked, even when we get ourselves in situations and hard times, we know how to stand. And that is the the order of Paul in the book of Ephesians. And actually it's you'll see it repeated in most of his books. So Ephesians chapter 1 to chapter 4, chapter 3 is about our sitting position, the finished works of Christ and what has happened to us as a result of what Christ has done for us. Ephesians chapter 4 uh, from uh, verse 1 up to chapter 6 verse 9. Paul now ushers in and tells us now because of who you are, walk worthy of it. Praise be to God. Then in Ephesians chapter 6 he teaches us now the final thought is how and how to stand when the enemy attacks. But I believe by the end of this episode may not may not be today but by the end of this episode you will know who the enemy is. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 1 Paul says Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus. So He's speaking to the saints. So before you get into warfare, you must first understand that you are a saint. How did you become a saint? We don't become a saint after we are dead, buried and you know then a process is is done to I know the people who call it beatification, then after beatification you are made a saint. No, 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 there is no process of becoming a saint. You become a saint by believing in Jesus Christ. The moment you believe in Christ, you become a saint. Saint does not mean you became sinless. It means you became you received the righteousness of Christ. So he is writing to the saints and the faithful 
in Christ Jesus. The saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. So you must be established in this. Before you go to the final thought of Paul, you must be established in that you are a saint. You must be established in that you are faithful. So in your fighting, you are never fighting to become a saint. Neither are you fighting to become faithful. No, you are already a saint who is faithful where? In Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again he says, grace and peace to you. Uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father. Our Father. So you are not fighting to get a place in God because he has already established you as his son. The Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 12 that to them that believed him, to them that accepted him, they were given power to become sons of God. So our warfare is not to make us sons. Why? Because we already are sons. In the same way Christ calls God his Father, you are also a son of God in the same measure. So God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is our Father. God is your Father. So there is no way of war, nowhere you are supposed to fight to become a son. You have been made one. Then he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. So before you get into warfare, you must first be established in this, that you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. So there is no warfare to get blessings. You understand? Yes, you must understand that. We don't fight to be blessed because we have already been blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is, the, this is the, the reason I was saying, if you go into the final thoughts of Paul without being established in his writings from chapter 1, you'll mess it up. You go fighting to be, to be blessed by God. And God has already established you in the blessing which is in Christ Jesus. So you are blessed. So we don't fight to be blessed. We don't get into warfare so that God can bless us. No, 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 no. That is mistaking it. That is, that is a great mistake. That is missing the point. The real thing is this. Before we go to the final thoughts, before we wrap it up with Paul, with the spiritual, with weapons of warfare and uh, fighting the devil, as you may call it for now, we must first understand that we are blessed with our spiritual blessings. So you don't lack anything, son of God. You don't lack anything. So we don't fight to get anything from God. Hallelujah. We don't fight to get anything from God. Let me say this. We actually don't fight the devil. He, praise God, that is big. We don't fight the devil. Why? We were, hey, we were not the ones supposed to fight the devil. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 that he has been disarmed. Who disarmed the devil? Jesus. If you are given a chance to fight the devil, my friend, that old man, the, the Bible calls it the old serpent, he knows so much. You know, this guy, he even preached to Jesus at one point. If you go to the book of Luke, you realize that this guy preached to Jesus, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So it was not your duty to fight him. It was his duty to deal with him. And the Bible says he has disarmed him. Ha, praise be to God. The devil has been disarmed. He has been disarmed. It is not your duty to fight him. So, you must understand you have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Again, we are not fighting to go to heaven. <laughs> Praise God. People, th people think like, when I overcome the devil, when I overcome the battles of this world, I will go to heaven. No, you must be established in this. We are not fighting to go to heaven. Actually, no one will go to heaven because they fought Everyone will go to heaven because they believed in Christ. Hey, praise God. Actually, the Bible says spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, it says we are seated with Christ where? In the heavenly places. So we will not go to heaven because we fought. The Bible says, the Bible talks uh, in the book of Revelation that those who overcome will be with Christ. And who are they that overcome? First John chapter 4 and chapter 5 talks about them that are in Christ. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So the overcoming that is uh, spoken about in the book of Revelation is being in Christ. So our battle or warfare is not to make us sons, is not to make us blessed, is not to take us to heaven. 
uh, I had one preacher say, a preacher that I really love, that in heaven, there will be no high fives. You know, like, high five, you made it. No, it is not your story. It is not about how you make it to heaven. It is about how he caused you to be there. <laughs> Praise be to God. You know, people think like, if I live a holy life, if I fight to the end, I fight, I fight every temptation. If I fight and fight and fight, I will end up in heaven. No, because it's not heaven at last. It's heaven at first. Ha. The moment you believed, you are transferred, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. And the Bible says you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly places. So where is heaven? Heaven is in Christ. And where are you? You are in Christ. So you are in Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. So we are not fighting to go to heaven. Praise God. Then he says, in, uh, in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So he is not, he, we are not fighting to be chosen by God. Hallelujah. We are not fighting to be chosen by God because he says he chose us where? In him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. We are not fighting to be holy. We have been chosen by God to be holy. Holiness is not man's initiative. Otherwise, <laughs> Uh, let me say this as I conclude because our time is far much spent. People have created their own standards of holiness. Some people think like when you put on a, a turban, you are holy. When you wear long skirts and long dresses, you are holy. Others think like when you, uh, you maintain a good hairstyle, you are holy. Let me tell you, holiness is not what you do. The standard of holiness is not with men. Otherwise... If the standard of holiness was with men, every man could ha be having his own standard of holiness. And that is what is happening in the church. It is very unfortunate that because I think uh, putting on uh, long hair is not holiness. So when I see anyone putting on long hair, I call them unholy. Who gave me the standards of holiness? I am not the measure of holiness. It is God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he says, everyone in Christ, you have been chosen to be holy. Praise be to God. And this choosing, uh, this choosing had nothing to do with your dress code. It had nothing to do with how you speak. It had nothing to do with your, with your uh, background. It had nothing to do with what you do. It had everything to do with what Christ did at the cross. So you are not fighting to be holy. Hallelujah. Then he says, and without blame before him in love. You are not fighting to be without blame. You are not fighting to be blameless. No, no, no. That is not the warfare that Paul is talking about. We are not getting into warfare so that we can be blameless before God. No. He chose us in him to be holy and without blame. So right now, wherever you are seated, as you are watching this program, I want to tell you that you are blameless before your father. You are not fighting to be blameless. You are blameless before your father. He says in his sight. People may have many reasons to blame you. You also may be having so many reasons to blame yourself. But before your father, you are blameless. Hallelujah. Then he says, before him in love, having predestinated us to adoptions, uh, to the adoption of sons. Then verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Again, we are not fighting to be forgiven. We have been forgiven. We have been redeemed through his blood. And... This is not according to our confession. This is according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. And I know this is wonderful because many people, when they hear about battle or getting into warfare, the first thing that comes into their mind is how to overcome sin, is how to overcome uh, the temptations, is how to overcome, you know, especially sin. I don't know who told people that sin is what we preach. We don't preach sin, we preach Christ. Let me say this statement, though I know uh, it's a dangerous statement. We don't preach against sin. We preach the gospel. The gospel is not preaching against sin. The gospel is preaching Christ. Because what you focus on is what you empower. Praise God. Because the great, uh, a great percentage of the church is focusing on how to overcome sin, how to deal with sin, how to heal from sin and all that. But that is not the gospel. The gospel is about what Christ has done. So the focus is not, have I sinned against God? The focus is, did Christ die for my sins? If he died for your sins, 
you are blameless if you believe. You have been set free from every sin and every entanglement of the enemy. Praise be to God. This is a, a spiritual warfare part one. And uh, kindly keep following, keep following. This, this is one of my best teachings, my, one of my best episodes about spiritual warfare. So I've said we cannot start with the final thought. We have to go back and see where Paul is coming from. And I believe you have enjoyed and uh, you are blessed in Christ Jesus because Christ has done all the work ours is to believe. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my viewers tonight. I call them blessed in their going out, in their coming in. Everything about them is blessed because of what Christ has done for them through the cross, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for watching. This has been the Beholding Christ Show, and my name is Ben Fetcher, and this is only found in Wema TV. I call you blessed because indeed in Christ, you are blessed and no man can do anything about it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen.